imagination you can draw pictures can tell a story they can capture it all visit the library read a book each day and we have a story you can illustrate find a subject you like and then jump in and explore you'll find yourself reading more and more every time you go there you get more smart when you're done at the library you can help with our arts mr deweese has a story but he needs your help if there aren't any pictures it can go on the shelf help from friends and your imagination too you can make an illustration and we'll say thank you you can make an illustration and we'll say woohoo you can make an illustration and we'll say yabba dabba do Hey kids, it's me, your art teacher, Mr. Castiglione. And me, your other art teacher, Miss Smith. Don't forget about me, Mr. Dewey's your reading teacher. <laughs> Look at your hair, it looks so funny. Yeah. What are you laughing at? What? Oh yeah, I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know why we shaved our heads, you can watch till the end of the episode. What do you think, Miss Smith? Do you guys look ridiculous? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. This is episode two. Okay. Of our crowdsourcing illustration project. Is here how here is how it works. Um, I'm reading you my story, one page, one episode at a time. Your job is to listen as I read and come up with an illustration for it. Today's episode is dedicated to fifth graders. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Page two. My mom wasn't always that fond of taking care of the animals because it really wasn't her idea. My dad was a lawyer and sometimes people didn't have enough money to pay him, so they gave him livestock as payment. At one time or another growing up, we had chickens, sheep, cows, pigs, goats, a pony, and probably a few other things I forgot. It was mostly fun for me, but my mom usually ended up with the burden of caring for all these animals. Wow, that was pretty cool. I totally pictured a picture in my head of what you read. What, did you, yeah, what about you, Miss Smith? I did, but Mr. Dweeb, tell us what you pictured before we tell you what we thought. Yeah, it is your story after all. Well, and as an author, I kind of created like the backstory so the students would understand why we actually have these animals. Um, so in my mind, I was, and like I wrote it here on my notes yeah. uh, for page two. In my mind, I, I picture a farm with all these different animals that I had. And I just thought there's so many different things you could do with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Lots of different ideas that we can do. Okay. Okay. So. Well, I think kids love to get inspiration. Of course. of course, you can take me and Ms. Smith's ideas or leave them. You can use them as a starting point and add your own details. But let's um, let's just give you a little bit of inspiration, okay? Uh, Ms. Smith, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. okay. All right. So based on the story and notes, we can okay. either do a f the yard with the animals or you can do mom beginning to yell down the stairs okay um and so i'm gonna do the point of view with the animal yeah i, I want to do that you want to do that too i think yeah. that would be fun let's give them some ideas okay. for starting points all right nothing too detailed though miss smith i know you're a really good artist <laughs> all right but let's keep it simple they can add the details okay okay so i definitely want to have a fence Okay. Um, and um, I think I'm gonna have my fence here. So I'm yeah. gonna draw like a horizon line. Yeah. Just so it's grounded. Very and, good. And um, I think I'm going to do some a fence. And your fence can look, you know, any way you want. I think I'm gonna do mine, and I'm gonna have like a wire kind of going oh. like that. And that's one of those like farm fences I've seen. Before. Yeah. And on there, right. I think I'm gonna do like. I think they have more than one wire, Miss Smith. Well, okay, I'll do two <laughs> to make sure it holds it up. Okay. 
You don't want one <laughs> fall. Or no, don't they? Yeah, no, they do have one. one. Oh, I messed hmm. up your picture. It doesn't matter. And I think I'm going to do, like, um, my sheep, you know, here, uh -huh. and, like, curly sheep. Yeah. Put some details. You know, details are up to you. And I definitely want to have my uh, cow somewhere in my picture. Okay. So I think I'm going to have like a side view of my cow. And I'm not sure how you draw a cow. I have to look at some pages. But he's going to go off the page. Because I kind of like your idea of, you know. Cropping it. Yeah. And yeah, that fills up the space really nicely, too. Yeah. And um, I might have like a little. A little, um, not a little duck. Mm -hmm. a little duck, maybe? A little bird of some type. Yeah. Like right here in the corner. Right. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. I mean, it's okay. very simple, and of course, he didn't draw a perfect picture. Right. But, you know, the, it's just a starting point. Yeah. I was thinking for a uh, drawing of a farm. Okay. I was actually thinking, um, Maybe an overhead view would be cool, like from like maybe there's an airplane's view or a bird's oh, view or something. Oh, I like that. So maybe idea. there's the the house, and maybe there's the fence. Okay. From like from the sky. So imagine we're an eagle, and maybe there's the porch with the stairs, and then maybe there's an overhead view of some animals. Oh, I love it. And then maybe that. over here, there's an overhead view of the corn. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I wouldn't even know. Oh, you know, they probably could do it in rows like that. Okay. Right? To show the fence and then, you know, maybe some bushes and then the roof and uh, different animals, but from above. So what would you see if you were seeing it from above? Probably not probably wouldn't see their legs. You probably wouldn't. No, but you might see some of the spots on their back. Yeah, right. And of course, you can look things up. In fact, uh, we have a little thing you can click. Mm -hmm. If you're on the website, you can click for some visuals, like pictures of animals that you can use as starting points. Of course, you want to make everything your own. And I bet you our students will look at this stuff and they'll probably say, I don't like that at all. I'm not going to use those ideas. I want to make my own idea. That's supposed to be a duck. But, um, you know, at least these are starting points, right? Uh -huh. And they can click uh, the, the slideshow. Yeah. And there'll be some pictures that they can use to inspire their ideas. I like that. All the right. more details, the better. Yeah, more. Yeah. yeah, the more is better. So what could they use to color this? I'm thinking watercolor pencils. I love watercolor uh -huh. pencils. You know, I'm a fan of mixed media. I love my right. crayons with my... Sharpie. Okay. Okay, but let's say you wanted to do something different. We mm -hmm. could do like clay. Clay? Yeah, they could right. take a picture of it. Um, yeah. We could do some paint. Paint is Ooh, good. Paint with the texture. They might have to take a trip to the art store to, yeah, to buy something. That would be awesome. That so, would be cool. Um, color pencils, all different kind of media. Yeah. Yeah. And does it have to be the same as the one before? No, they can use different materials for each one. Oh, I think I'll stick idea. with the same one, but they can do whatever they want. Yeah. All right. Remember, use up the pages. This is my graph. Yeah, fill the page. We want to see lots of color, lots of detail, big, bold, or however you want to do it. Yeah. All right. Can't wait to see what you come up with. To turn in your illustration, you could just wait and turn it in during art class next year. Or you could use it as an excuse to visit one of Virginia's most spectacular libraries, the TCC Virginia Beach Joint Use Library. You have got to come here. Just ask your parents to drive you to the Virginia Beach TCC Joint Use Library and walk to the back to the children's area. Find the golden treasure box in the back of the room and open it up. Make sure to take out a folder from the top of the box and fill out the form inside. It has a place where you can think of a title for Mr. DeWeese's story, but you have to visit the library in order to have a say in it. Your parent is also gonna need to sign this part, so don't leave that part out. 
place the form and the artwork into the folder and close the treasure box. We'll be checking in every so often. I cannot wait to see your work. If you forget exactly what to do, don't worry. The librarians are very helpful. Just ask them for help and they will show you what to do and where to go. Now, if you're not from Virginia Beach, Virginia, but you still want to make an illustration for Mr. Deweese's story, you can simply ask for your parents' help to take a nice photograph of your work. Take the photo and email it to me, Mr. Castiglione, at landstownart at gmail.com. Be sure to let me know who you are and where you're from. I can't wait to see what you come up with. It's that time again. What time is that, Mr. Deweese? Time for the spin of the Don't Cut Reading or Art Out of Your Life on the haircut wheel. Guys, All right. this is ridiculous. Your wives are going to be so mad. It's for the children. Yeah, Smith. Think about the children. We want them to turn, tune in next episode to see what we do. Okay. As a matter of fact, Miss Smith, would you do the honors for us, please? All right, it's you and Sam. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my Look at this one. Oh, my goodness. You guys see that? That oh, is man. hilarious. Okay, so if you want to see us with these hairstyles, tune in next episode. And, boys and girls, the reason we're doing this is for you. As a matter of fact, some international children's book illustrators contacted me, and they said they wanted to help give you some inspiration. As a matter of fact, they made little interviews for you to help uh, inspire you and see how a real professional makes a children's book illustration. If you just click in the links below, we've got interviews from Helena Bogosian, Nora Hilb, Sylvia Chung, Wendy Rasmussen, I hope I'm saying their names right, Pat and Robin DeWitt, and maybe even more. Um, I asked a bunch of illustrators if they could help out, and man, are these people super kind to make videos for you. I hope you'll check them out. They're in the links below, okay? It'll give you some great inspiration. Yeah, and it's always awesome to get real advice and to look at real artists doing illustration. You're gonna love it. Check it out. Check out the link. And uh, before we say goodbye, it's time for the second installment of interesting things that you can do in this library. Yes, yeah. this is an amazing library. It's yes. huge, and there's so many things to do that I didn't know about. I've been watching these videos, and now I know what to do. Yeah. All right. Okay. We All will right. see you next episode. Bye. Bye. Hi, kids. It's Miss Elena again from the Joint Use Library. This is our programming room. Many of you may have been in here before for exciting programs that we have, like science classes where we make volcanoes, or arts and crafts classes. We've done puppet shows, magicians. We had a petting zoo the other day with a little teeny tiny miniature pig. All sorts of fun things happen in here. And books are integrated in all the programs that we do. We've got book displays for you to take books home and learn more about the subjects that you learned about in these fun, free programs at the library. You can check out the link below to find out all the programs that are offered at your local library. It gives you all the information on how to register and everything is free. Hope to see you soon.